This video gives you the cheat sheet for 2022's NBA Finals from an unbiased Raptor fan's perspective. Very few expected these two teams to last until June, considering the Boston Celtics were 11th place nearly midway through the season, and the Golden State Warriors were given a 10% chance to make the finals back at the All-Star break. It seems like the Super Team era is finally behind us, as both the Dubs and Cs have naturally rebuilt their rosters by drafting every one of their top players. The chess match defensively between Coach Ime Udoka and Steve Kerr We'll see both men in charge utilize everything from a basic zone to advanced box and ones. This year, Boston and Golden State each took one game from each other, and I know a season series means basically nothing, but it's clear from those outings that whoever plays better between Stephen Curry and Jason Tatum will likely win the series. In a battle of new school three point shooting versus old school grinded out defense, the Celtics' rating on defense and the Warriors' rating on offense, both rank second respectively among playoff teams. Given I'm just a neutral Toronto fan, who has the best shot at winning in my opinion? Before continuing, only 10.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. I spoke on this in my upload from a few days ago, but in case you missed it, the Celtics have already taken out the teams with the number one and number three ranked defenses in these playoffs. Meanwhile, the defensive rating for the Warriors ranks down at number six in these playoffs, just below the eliminated Chicago Bulls. Golden State's the current Vegas favorite, but it's their significantly worse mark defensively than Boston, which is why ESPN's Basketball Power Index has given the Celtics an 86% chance to win this series. On the other hand, that power index is the same metric which gave Golden State a 10% chance to make the finals around three months ago. Also, the Warriors have been without the services of Andre Iguodala, and since the middle of the second round, they've been missing an elite guard defender who could see some time on Tatum and Brown in Gary Payton II. Those additions should help, but you have to wonder how much a 38-year-old out-of-rhythm Iguodala can give you on two of the best wing players in our game, and in terms of the Warriors' defense, specifically on the Jays, who are both at least 6'6", 225, is Gary Payton II going to have enough reach and strength to bother either Tatum or Brown? I think that's a real question. The Warriors are the most dominant home team in these finals by far, as they've gone 9-0 at Chase Center, much better than the Celtics' 5-4 record at the TD Garden. Thriving off their home crowd, the dubs seem unbeatable when the Bay Area faithful get rockin', However, since the start of the Warriors' dynasty in 2014-15, the Celtics are plus 73 in Golden State, or I should say in either Oakland or San Francisco, while no other road team is even close to having a positive scoring margin over that span. In each of those years since, Boston's had at least one member of their current Big Three in Smart, Brown, and Tatum. Since the start of the 2017-18 campaign, Stephen Curry's made just 9 of his 27 field goal attempts when guarded by Marcus Smart, equating to just 33.3%. Over that span of 5 seasons while being guarded by the Defensive Player of the Year, Curry's posted just 30 points in 6 games, he's shooting 30% from 3 point range, and has a 3 to 7 assist to turnover ratio. Will Curry go against those numbers and exact revenge on the man Golden State thought made a dirty play, which injured their best player right before the playoffs? Or will the DPOY's clamps, combined with Ime Udoka's game planning, be too much for the three times scoring an NBA champion to handle? How Steph responds to the relentless on-ball pressure and peskiness from Smart will be a determining factor in these finals. From the Warriors' perspective trying to shut down Jason Tatum, their best bet is going to be putting Andrew Wiggins on him, as without Wiggs, Luka in the previous round would have averaged 40 points per game. My fellow Torontonian in Maple Jordan is living his best life in the Bay, having made an appearance as an all-star starter back in February, as at nearly 6'8 in the prime of his career at age 27, Andrew's two-way ability at the small forward spot has somewhat replaced the impact that Kevin Durant used to have before the snake skipped town. Scariest fact about the Warriors you may see in this entire video is that Wiggins is only this team's fourth leading scorer in 2022's playoffs. His defense is going to be vital, of course, but what Andrew provides in this series offensively will be massive as well, 
Considering in the four-point win Golden State took in Boston back in December, Wiggs had a 27-piece. The reason this is such a fascinating finals matchup is that while Curry, Thompson, Poole, and Wiggins represent one damn powerful offensive force, they're going up against a team that, when focused, is a damn near impossibility to find a rhythm on consistently. Boston's stifling, athletic, and on-a-string defense is one of the primary reasons for why they've gone 6-0 following a loss and 3-0 in elimination games in these playoffs. Of course, this ultimately comes down to the battle of the superstars, as Tatum and Brown versus Curry and Thompson should be a thriller. Clay's had an outstanding playoffs, averaging a team's second most 19.8 points per game, but with the Celtics ball pressure and the fact that Thompson mostly thrives off catch and shoots as opposed to creating shots off the dribble, this may be a hot take, but I think Jordan Poole could become the Warriors' second most important player in these finals. It'll be JP's first finals appearance, of course, but he's passed every test during his debut in the postseason through three rounds. Speaking to his improvement from back in his rookie year, Poole had a league-worst 45.4% true shooting mark, while in these playoffs, Jordan has a 67.3% true shooting mark, which is the best in the league by a guard, and also the best by a player averaging 15-plus points, according to StatMuse. In addition to the battle of these two teams' top players, another decisive factor will be the performances of the team's younger prospects. Is it going to be the 19- and 20-year-old phenoms in Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody showing out for Golden State, or will Boston have the advantage with the Time Lord Robert Williams and the Dark Knight Grant Williams? Advantage Boston, in my humble opinion, Kaminga and Moody are going to be special players in a year or two. They're already great, but Rob Williams is already one of the NBA's best big man defenders, and he's also a deadly lob outlet for the Celtic playmakers. The other Williams and Grant proved how valuable he was on the defensive end with his clamps on Giannis in round number two. The Greek freak was going to break Michael Jordan's single game scoring record if Grant wasn't there to draw charges and make everything extremely difficult for Giannis with his physicality. Grant's Boston's version of Draymond Green, but the best part about the Batman is that he's a 40 plus percent three point shooter taking five triples per game in these playoffs. Grant also shot 40 plus percent from deep over 77 games during the regular season, man's a bona fide floor spacer at the power forward spot. He can give you minutes at the stretch five as well, but as we know, depth and young talent can only take you so far when it's winning time. Between the regular season and playoffs, when the greatest defender in our game in Draymond Green and the most skilled offensive talent in Stephen Curry are both playing, Golden State's record is an incredible 41-11, and 11, a 78.8% winning percentage, the best in the association. Then again, that won't intimidate a Boston team that went 31-10 and 10 to close out the season, marking the greatest second half of the year record for a team below 500 prior to the midway point. Styles make fights in the NBA just like in any other sport, so for the online analysts bringing up the fact that Boston's had an easy path, while I'd strongly disagree with that and argue back that they went through three of our game's best players in Durant, Adetokounmpo, and Butler, none of that actually matters. Golden State versus Boston is of course a whole new matchup, and we're about to see how Tatum and Brown's offense responds to the relentless bucket getting of the Warriors, and on the other hand, we'll find out how Curry, Clay, and Poole respond to the Celtics' blistering on-ball pressure defensively. In terms of who I'm picking, this is the reason I didn't title this video Predicting the NBA Finals, because with the array of talent on both sides, it's actually infuriating me right now that I can't decide a winner, but I'll leave it up to you guys who folds first in the NBA Finals and why. Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete Community Speaks. Shoutout to Swoo who says the Celtics game plan for the finals should be dominating the paint on both ends of the floor. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.